So we got an email from um, Joe uh, from Defeat Poverty DC who asked, uh, what are the expected savings DCPS hopes to obtain um, and will the savings be reinvested to improve student outcomes? Well, that's exactly the point of this consolidation proposal. We actually want to use the savings from subsidizing small schools to be able to create schools that have the budget to uh, focus on teaching and learning. Um, this is the point of the of the proposal. So we don't have a dollar amount um, because it's not about a windfall that's going to be in somebody's savings account. Literally, this will be reinvested in the classrooms that the students are moving to to be able to provide them with things like reading interventions, um, better extracurricular activities, all kinds of things. And, and so to what extent or where does that data uh, become available to the public or at what point in this process? Well, what you'll see is you'll see school budgets. And in fact, if you go on our website, we look at what a school that's at critical mass looks like versus a school that is under enrolled. And you're able to see what we're spending our money on. Um, as I mentioned, in some cases, we're spending only 30 to 40 percent of our money on classroom teachers and, and art, PE, librarians, those kinds of things. Whereas once you hit a critical mass, 350 for elementary schools, 450 for middle schools, 600 for high schools, you actually have a budget that allows you to buy everything that you want to buy. Um, you actually have multiple classes so that you can flexibly group and you have time to work with your struggling readers versus your advanced readers. These are the kinds of schools that we have right now. You know, we have string and gum in some places trying to make it work and our children deserve better than that. Okay, one final question and thank you again for doing this. Um, we got an email from Sarah who asked, how are you going to accommodate uh, dis students with disability by closing three sc schools that educate them? How are you uh, going to minimize spending when most parents will opt out and send these students to Virginia or Maryland? Um, I actually think that uh, what we're doing with Sharp Health and Mamie D. Lee is a huge win for parents of children with disabilities. Uh, both the Sharp Health building and the Mamie D. Lee building are ill-equipped to provide a 21st century um, education to our young people with disabilities. And we're going to build a brand new state-of-the-art special education school at River Terrace, which is in Ward 7. Um, the majority of the children at Sharp Health and Mamie D. Lee are actually from Ward 7 and 8. And so instead of traipsing them way across town, we'll build a state-of-the-art special education center in their neighborhood um, and provi provide them with the very best. We are competing against private schools. I believe that we have the ability to um, serve them just as well as some of these non-public schools do. And we're in consultation with St. Coletta's, which is a great public charter school that serves children with disabilities. They're consulting with us to design the school. I actually think it's going to be great. And we also, in Prospect Learning Center, frankly, are segregating some stu students who would be great um, in, a, in the least restricted environment. And so we want to get them into their neighborhood schools. We want our neighborhood schools to have the capacity to be able to serve children where they are, again, so that our children don't have to traipse across town just because they have special needs. Our obligation is to serve them as well as we can, as close to home as we can, and this proposal will help us get there.